he isn't really that good at defending his actual points outside of just rhetoric. Like, his actual points aren't even that good. He is a liberal. We can't keep saying that he is on the left or started... Liberals are on the left, mother What the Oh, oh, to these people, not to these people. Are like, you like kidding shit, me? Right? If you're gonna what make slanderous claims, you, you better have good evidence. I'm not gonna come on here and start like making a bunch of claims about any of the other panelists or people that are not here and unless it, I have substantiated it evidence. Demonstrably true. <laughs> you have to demonstrate it. What do you think demonstrably true means? That he's focused on money. A whole bunch of shit. What do you think that means? What does the word demonstrate mean? I'd like, like to thank Destiny for making. Oh boy. I, I would like to thank Destiny for making the just chatting uh, category happen on Twitch. I'm not. Destiny has done, has and will and and has been doing great things. Twitch, good Destiny, good. Okay, good. Wow. Awesome. All right, so so if if we're going to Shut so then it sounds no. like you have oh did you have more? No. Did you, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have more. Yes. Go ahead. Katie, go ahead. finish and then meet. Once Katie is finished, meet you make up, and then we'll go to Nine Tails, and then. We'll... I'm so mad. I created I'm the internet, shaking. guys. I'm so angry. Oh. And stuff a long time ago that I wanted to respond to, and I don't even remember what it was anymore. So that's a problem. Um. Yeah. I'm sure Destiny has done great things. I think what was Jason is trying to say that like in the same way that you can find a lot of trans people at Ardite who would say that it's a travesty that he got banned, you can find a lot of leftist people who were de-radicalized by Destiny and would say that they've stopped watching him for the last year or two because he has deteriorated in his level of content. He's become a lot more uh, reactionary as Vosh would say or just more left, uh, more right leaning as some other other people would say I don't think it's controversial never with to any that substantial he's, uh, lib. point ever <laughs> um, I don't care if he does it for money I don't think that he does uh, when I told him I think he cares about human beings he said that's not true so I'm gonna believe him on that that said thing for the sub sorry I didn't say before I was what? raging did I say that some stuff but I, I also remember. know that he has his own style and that that's fine whatever I thank Destiny very much for what he did. If we're talking about the left, he's not very helpful to the left for a very long time. He's in an anti-lefty arc right now. So while I am aware of the history, currently in the reality that we live in, Destiny has not been very helpful to the online left. Do I think thank that God. matters to any extent? Um, and like the banning of his? No, I don't think people should be banned because they're not helpful to the left. Now, Meet, I get that you think Destiny still has value to the online left and to progressive causes. And I might, when I said, you know what, I'll walk back. I'm not saying that he doesn't have any value. When these people I say left, the they're talking about like socialism. Thank him very shit, much for de radicalizing right. a lot of people. I think he's now radicalizing a lot of people. That's why I brought up Doobie as well, because Doobie does that too. For him, it's a blood sport, and people are getting convinced by these arguments, and they are moving further to shittier opinions, shittier, bad, harmful opinions. So, to answer Wick's question very quickly, when people are giving a shitty take. Oh, I remember what, what I want to tell you, Erdai. When I said that Destiny is a great debater, what I meant to say by... Thanks, Bluff. Uh, oh, who is it? Did she oh, just sorry. mute her? Layla, thanks for the sub. Go do that. Oh no, God. you can't really do that when it's Destiny, because Destiny can take 1v20, okay? He's f***ing awesome at what he does. That's the problem. When the person that has a shitty take is really good at what they're doing, they might still win, even though their take is really shitty. So it's it's not about like the fact that he's just a magician. Okay. That's it. Uh, okay. So, meet and then yes, okay. um yeah, go ahead. Meet. So, all right. There, I first off, when we're talking about human, unless we just think that Destiny is like the god tier human that is way smarter than all of us, I don't think it's very useful. To, I think that like, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just getting lost in my idiot brain. I can run down my arguments that I haven't listed here. First off. Few, a few contradictions that have been made here that are pretty blatant. The idea that we can necessarily say confidently that like this is all just a money game for Destiny is kind of silly when the guy's literally like actively pushing rhetoric and walking the line of getting banned from the platform. Uh, it's kind of just like a silly argument to make just for that reason. Specifically when we're talking about that in particular. Second, when we're talking about Destiny being uniquely good at rhetoric, Thank you, the Von Docs. I think that's a pretty good argument. Uh, you can't really say that and then use that as a, one of the reasons in your argument for why he's 
or, or, or you can't recognize that and then also say that like, oh, what is he doing for the left? Uh, that's how, how about that? How about the fact that if you remove the giga, apparently, according to you guys, the giga brain number one alpha dog person who can defend any kind of position and defeat all comers, maybe it's worthwhile keeping the only person like that that happens to exist on the left, even if center left. Thank God. Maybe it's useful keeping that person around the platform. Number three, uh, this whole idea of, oh, well, he's on an anti-lefty arc, so that's not useful to the left. Sometimes, when we're talking about radicals, or some of the people on this panel are looking at men, I think it's really wor worth worthwhile for the left to do lefty infighting, just like it might be worthwhile for the right to do righty infighting, because you want to cleave off the cancer, all right? Because they're always going to be there. And lastly, I just want to say, uh, if with this 1v20, like, oh, we have to get rid of Destiny, that's cool. Uh, we can all talk, we all think each other's takes are dumb, blah, 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 long stretch, et cetera. But lastly, I just want to say, this whole 1v20 thing, oh, he can 1v20, so we have to remove him from the platform. Just saying, if your whole thing is oh, that no. we have to remove the guy who's so logically consistent that he can 1v100 just anybody, maybe maybe you're the secret radical you haven't Did realized. Did you hear yet. me <laughs> say that? <laughs> 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 I didn't say that. Rhetorically consistent. Hey, not, hey, I didn't. Not, I, is, I, that's funny, I didn't use your name, so it's sort of weird views. that you assume I'm talking about you. I, what okay. views are inconsistent? Okay. Go ahead, Jason, tell me. Since you're going to put up that, like, honestly, like, what, what's the point? First of all, you're basically with that little image that you're trying to do, being like, look, he's moving right, and anyone who's right wing is oh, bad, Jesus. which is a really dog shit take to have, by the way. Um, okay. Second of all, what are his inconsistent views? Yes, it is absolutely wrong to just assume that a person's a bad person because they tend to lean conservative. You might not like their fucking ideas, but half of these people are the ones that work at homeless shelters, that are handing out free food, that are doing Wait, good work. Wait, you said when somebody said, moving like, right is I bad, that's not the same the as left thinking they're a bad person. The I'm hey, talking I'm specifically about what Jason. Like, what the fuck is he doing? I'm like, I'm out. If he's I'm saying out. he's left, Jason, and you're saying he's left, and he's helping the left, can and he's not remove, doing that. Can you take the image off? I don't know if I could show images of Destiny uh, since he's banned. So, oh, it, I, what I is he showing of me? That I can do. So please just remove that for me real quick. Then Ninetales uh, has been wanting in. And we're gonna let her get a chance. Wait, is this that motherfucker that came into my chat the other day that was like, you're invalidating my non-binary race? Is that um, who this so, is? Um, yeah, Destiny being, you know, the original debate bro thing actually doesn't mean that much to me. It means he's an opportunist. It might not be. He was in the right place at the right time. But I've also yes. seen many other people, and I'm going to brag here, including yeah. myself, who can take a, uh, unlimited sized uh, dog piling <laughs> and do fine. If anything, I think what? the fact that people revere Destiny as being some sort of elite debater while plenty of smaller uh, debaters put actual time into preparation uh, and get thrown under the bus because he's so big that nobody watches them. Yeah, I think it's actually better that, you know, the... This the is the woman that accused me of rape, by the way, somebody over and over again on Twitter. Will be spread out. Thanks for the sub. He can benefit from that. Now, that's we'll get not rid of all big creators? No, 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 just, just calm down. Okay. That's not to say okay. that I want that to happen to everybody. Just that, you know, it's not a bad thing for me. Uh, but overall, the one thing I find most interesting about Destiny, aside from the fact that he normalizes really bad, terrible takes, and aside from the fact that he normalizes alt-writers, is the fact that he cannot There's take the exact of form of criticizing okay. that he dishes out. And he hides behind his fans to do that heavy lifting for him when he can't handle it. I'm, I'm so sick of it. He's had me on once to talk about something that was pretty milk so but every time I've Her had an position issue with was his so conduct stupid. directly, no, he will never have me on his stream. Why? Because he's an egomaniac who doesn't want to look bad ever. So as much as I agree, you know, he has skills as a debater. And I'm Haven't I had her on my stream like two or three times? He's not her bad finish. at it. He's also so incredibly uh, unhumbled by it that I wouldn't expect him to ever admit he was wrong. Okay, V1. Uh, if you don't speak now, you're not going to get a chance probably. So go ahead. Yeah, well, I do agree that uh, Destiny is a an amazing rhetorician. He isn't really that good at defending his actual points outside of just rhetoric. Like his actual points aren't even that good. He is a liberal. We can't keep saying that he is on the left or started. Liberals are on the left, mother. What the? Not Holy to these shit. people. Not to these fucking people. Hell, that's like, are that's you like fucking kidding shit, me? Right? Liberals that's are not the left. I'm yes, sorry. they fucking are. Yeah, well, and you're not so you're a diet brain dead. Brain dead not, not to these otherwise. people. No. Holy shit! He's not gonna let. What the fuck just happened? What? 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 What
Let me want to She's unhinged. I can't right. fucking handle this shit. Are, are you down? I can't handle it. Handle All right, it. who gives Holy a shit if he started shit. this place? It doesn't matter. Uh, like, why do we still keep All right, so, so then we don't have to use it as, uh, to substantiate our positions then, right? We don't have to continue. She's unhinged. Hey, me, just let, let him finish. Okay. Okay. It really does not matter at all. Like, uh, it doesn't matter. Also, um, a bit with what, what's your name? Fuck, my UI is not working. One Eric second. or Katie. Good one. Or me. <laughs> or Ninetales. There's three she, hers. I'm right. having, a, yeah, Ninetales, Ninetales, yeah. Um, one thing you said with like him taking up space, I guess, on the Twitch politics scene, I don't think you can really blame bigger creators existing for you not getting your oh! uh, I think that is kind of a bit of a childish way of looking at that. Uh, and I'm not, maybe I'm not doing that. Like, I'm just your level <laughs> isn't serious. Actually as Move good spammer. As you think it is. Uh, Move spammer. Move no, spammer. I, yeah, I could have said it better because what I'm saying is that the she move spammed. Like, How am I supposed to win against a move spammer? Distributed with him being gone, not that like I'm entitled to it. Yeah, but okay. I, I don't think him being gone will even change. Hold on, let me catch up on Dono. Sorry. Okay, so uh, just a a, a note. Tendons um, are also very important. Time is winding down. I would love Men to have do much this more, but I do have another tendons. appointment at that eight. Can't be so reversed for treatment. we are going to do. We'll we'll finish the current. I've worked hard for my left credentials. Statements, and everyone will be, get their outro. Thanks for all I just the want to thank you all for coming. Morning. I know it's gotten a little Eridite heated, but I appreciate you uh, for SR the most part progress. being very respectful. So thank you. So Honestly, if lefties are this dumb and have this bad of takes and are so dishonest with reality, Hear me. yeah. Hear it's me. fucking dog shit. Their argues, argues should me. be shouted down so, because they're bad. What I linked the funny meme give each other. They're a bad person, L. by the way. I have L. no idea if they're a good person. They just might. Hell. Hell. Have Hell, life experiences please. that I don't understand. Oh, him. He is. Uh, I Everybody think he's the greatest the person thing. alive. It she doesn't really matter. I, I don't Mark. care. Wink. His character is so irrelevant There's to me and everything that I'm saying. Thanks, Blepsy. If I agree with what he says or if I don't agree with what he says and how I think he should be treated based on what he's saying. All I know is that ever since I got on this sphere, um, I haven't heard Destiny say a lot of things that are near to where I would want it to be on the progressive scale, obviously. I do think that he's definitely become more right-leaning than he was when I first entered the sphere. I have no doubt that he still does good work um, for the left, but I also know that he's very harmful to it. And I oh, I forgot somebody. Nick, Nick Fuentes. Fred? I'm just Thanks kidding. Thanks for the thousand bits and real thing. Thank you for the sub at tier one. Appreciate it, guys. Banned or shouldn't get banned. Him being a good Thanks, debater or, but, uh, or a good person with so rhetoric bad. doesn't mean that he shouldn't be allowed or whatever. Like, there are many people who have shitty takes that uh, come on sometimes. And sometimes Destiny has good takes. Um, not as often as I would hope that he'd have, especially if I felt like he was more consistent with his views. Um, but I just want people to know that as far as I'm concerned, I don't really think he's an evil mastermind. I, I don't really care about his personality. And I think people who do, like, they need to stop being so parasocial because it's not healthy. I wish the word parasocial was never introduced to the discourse. It's like, it's become like this catch-all term to like, just be weird and like, say like, this is bad because it's parasocial. Like, libertarians may or may not be on the left, but liberals are descriptively on the left. All you need to do is read a textbook about what political spectrum is, and you'll understand that liberals are on the left. They're not as far left as a communist, obviously. But I think that we all know that. Second of all, being critical of the left does not make you a right winger. It makes you responsible. There's you should always be critical of, of your own group. Okay. It's why I will go above and beyond as somebody in the mental health field to talk about these serious issues that happen within psychology and with mental health treatment. It is important and it is responsible. I am not saying that Destiny oh, is perfect be... and he's never done wrong. I disagree with some of his takes. I basically never nice. agree with how he words things on Twitter, ever. But the issue is that I see this like rampant villainizing, slanderous claims. Jason here said a bunch of shit with no evidence about money and all this other shit when he's not even been on the Twitch sphere for long. There's he only probably doesn't watch deal. the YouTube videos okay. of Destiny, so he has no fucking idea. He was on like a panel once with the dude and just made a whole bunch of un on a panel with Destiny several fucking times. Excuse you. So go ahead. Well, okay, you must know him complexly. But you know, you're oh, making you're losing. making a lot of qualifying like statements about. Yeah, me, I would like evidence for know. your claims. Again, 
Gates so, destiny. You know, because if you're going to make slanderous kind of claims, what you, said. you better have good evidence. I'm not going to come on here and start like making a bunch of claims about any of the other panelists or people that are not here and unless that, I have substantiated that evidence. That's true. <laughs> you have to demonstrate it. That, what do you think demonstrably that true means? That he's focused on money. A whole bunch of shit. What do you think that means? What does the word demonstrate mean? Intentions. Like, that's pure speculation. Okay. Yeah, that's our point. Okay, gang. I'm sorry. Wait, so I'm, I'm next. Trying. I'm next. No, no, it's real quick. Real quick. Real You're going to get a closing quick. statement, I can throw, No, but I don't want to throw arguments that was my in my closing, closing statement because that's rude, you know? Oh. Go ahead, go ahead then, quick. Oh, I Real can quick. throw my arguments in my closing statement if you want, if it's okay. You know, I'll throw some just some. Uh, some <laughs> you can't just say something is demonstrably um, true. Like it is, thanks for the you're great. Um, so yeah, let's just go to closing, gang. Um, okay. It's like yeah, saying I'm right, QED. Is, uh, <laughs> like, wait, wait, where's the QED yeah, part? I'm fine, I'm fine with that. I just try to keep point. my jabs out of my closing statement. I understand. So, so we'll go in the reverse wrong. order. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate that. Where's the soy? Like you have to I'll prove it versus it. the alpha. Like, I just did by what I said. Or speculate as to the contents of his character. Totally fine to do so. If you wanted to base your fandom around that, that's fine. We can talk about it if you want. But well, that's the whole reason why it's just fucking stupid to try to make like qualitative, like conclusive statements based on some like weird, uh, uh, like uh, uh, speculation as to the contents of his heart or something. Yeah. I totally agree with Katie. I care about like cause and effect. I care about what's actually happening. I care about accurate, descriptive, and prescriptive claims. And one at last thing that I want God, to add on fuck, I wish my real closing statement deal. is that if we're talking about things that. Uh, the, Gosh, thanks for the sense, guys. The canvassing work that Destiny has. Just saying. And thank you for the sudden views. I don't know where you all came from, but welcome. Hello, and thanks for being here. Cringe. A whole bunch of claims have been made here. You should watch it on YouTube if you just got here. There's a lot of heat. <laughs> I was real mad. She's in the wrong here. The only thing, the only substantiation of why it was good for Destiny to be a ban banned here in a, this particular case is a, just a, literally a whole bunch of speculation and unsubstantiated claims, the, the most of which just sound to be. And thank you, oh, it's DJ. Stop hey, muting guys. the fucking panel, Eurodite. What the welcome. fuck? I'm not to gonna... thank Donos. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, Destiny refugees, give me money, because I think that that's also kind of cringe. I'm so mad at what's happening, and I have like a fierce sense of justice, which is probably why I got into like working with at-risk populations in the first place. Oh my because god. fuck this shit. This is the same energy that I used to storm to one of my clients' school and demand that they give her kid like remediary counseling and that they can't just dismiss her because English isn't her first language and she's indigenous, you fucking assholes. <sighs> okay, Legendary <sighs> Barry, Jesus. thank you for the sub. I, like Grandpa of Destiny, love to have people come against me and debate with me because I actually care about truth and the things that I claim to care about. So I'm happy to talk about them anytime. Thank you. Uh, V1, please. So uh, that was a shit show. Um... <laughs> whole thing was just a lot of people dick riding destiny and getting mad about people dick riding destiny oh nice uh, no productive conclusion was came to and uh that was not really that great of a discussion um, <laughs> i'm i'm sorry that i didn't talk too much and i wasn't very um active in this i am more used to like uh congress style debates in like my school debate club for example so um, <laughs> i apologize if i wasn't a little more aggressive but uh, I what is that? Today, which I think that's one of my worst decisions in my life. But uh, it's uh, at v2.x. Go follow me. Oh, this isn't the non-binary um, person, I don't think, right? That's about it. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you for being here. I do appreciate you. Uh, hopefully you were entertained, if nothing else. Uh, so, uh, Nine Tails, please. DGGL. Hey, I actually had a lot of fun with that. Uh, <laughs> do you wish that some of the more level-headed people would have spoken more, but that's something. Yeah, this go. convo sucked. Also, I did not contribute. You're, you're <laughs> cutting out. We can't hear you. Oh, really? Crap. No. Um, uh, is that still going on? No, continue, please, quickly. Yeah. Uh, okay, testing, testing, testing. Where's my thing? Did you're good. Oh. You're good. Whoa. Okay, is that better? Fuck donos. Yes. Fuck okay. the left and the so, boss. I'm I'll ready to emerge I don't from like the walls as your demonstrable parasocial trooper. Came from blood on for this. the blood my god. My arguments came from the either the utilitarian view of it, which was going to be like what I first came in before I, I read the prompt, and then the like, you know, what could have what could have he possibly done. And as far as like the whole other streamers being harassed by his fans thing, I am not convinced by the whole he does a lot. Like he may. 
but it's not enough and he should find something else he could do because there are plenty of streamers b both who are public about it and private that means there's a lot more than uh than what we hear about publicly who have been terribly harassed by his community simply because they kind of owned him one and then he talked shit about them afterwards <laughs> so personally as much as i'd like to think the best of this and that there's not any like active thing going on i have a feeling that there's a bit of opportunism and enjoying you know the kind of audience he has despite them being really cringe send the elevator back uh, down lastly, why i'm about to uh, win the fight please don't assume that other people can't do just destiny's job he doesn't even do preparation for his debates uh, anyway, so I'm Nine Tails Cosmic Fox on Twitch. That is all spelt as words, and Tails is spelt T A I L S. And on Twitter, I am at M9 Scarlet. That's the letter M, the number nine, and Scarlet with two T's. If you like Destiny, you probably will like me because I'm a debater. Uh, I have cringe takes once in a what while. What did I bring this and, dipshit on uh, to even discuss but once? Unlike Destiny, I actually make sure I know my shit when I go into yep. debates. Who did I? What did I bring her on to discuss? Destiny, because I felt like just doing something on the fly. The oh, except when she talked to me. So. Oh yeah, that was the Anyways, one time she didn't do any well, research. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> okay, kiddo. You especially kind of last minute. So. Uh, oh, it was oligarch. She didn't know what the fucking oligarch was. She didn't know that it was being a pack of super pack. Do you do you know what? the average senator makes from lobbying per year um i i don't know if senators can make money from lobbying or what do you mean by that well donations quote unquote don't and and that's what we know i'm like that's not counting dark money donations um i i don't know uh three hundred thousand okay. dollars from, from corporate interest donations to their campaign the lobbying not to them so the senators aren't making that money that's going to their campaign right well, ideally, but we don't actually know that with dark money because we can't track it. No, and that's no, no, the no, problem. No, 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 no. Hold on. That if you want to talk about dark money, that's great. But now you're in conspiracy land. So from what we do know, you're talking about the overall money that certain corporations and employers of those corporations are donating to the campaigns of these senators, not just money going into their pockets that they're running around buying hookers with. So. Dark money refers to political spending by nonprofit organizations in the politics of the in the political body of the United States. So they don't have to report everything that they donate, and they don't have to report to, back to their donors where wait, 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 hold on, hold how on. much they spend. My understanding of no, no, hold on. Dark money, so like a super PAC, is an organization that can accept donations without having to report where they're coming from because they're spending it not on campaigns. So a super PAC can receive money and not report on who it comes from, but they can't send an unlimited amount of money on track to a certain campaign or senator. That would be illegal. The dark money is the political spending. Uh, that's how they get their dark money, what you're no, describing. No, no, candidates don't get dark money. Dark money goes but to this, super PACs. Do you think it's normal to only have three companies be like the major competitors for that sort of thing? How, how many? I mean, depending on the, what you're talking about, yeah, it could be. No, really, not in a developed economy. Maybe wait, hold in on, like, no, 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 maybe, hold on, wait. In an emerging it's, economy? No, 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 it's the a, exact... No, let, me, let me point something out. What you're describing is possible in an emerging economy, but in a developed economy, there would be much more to this than that. You're, you've specifically described a private sector that is only available to established uh, businesses. No, okay. Nobody can, else can find their way in there. No, 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 okay. Firstly, there are, more, there are way more than three defense contractors. I named three off the top of my head. Number one, okay? And number two, what you're describing is exactly the opposite. The more developed an economy becomes, the harder it is for a startup to come and be competitive. Because once you've reached something, the term is an economy of scale, all of the costs of doing business decrease such that it becomes incredibly hard for a startup or a new company to compete with you. If I wanted to sell clothes and outperform Walmart, it would be incredibly difficult for me to do so because I don't already have have the economy of scale, all the supply lines, all the discounts I get for buying in bulk order. I don't have that available to me. Yeah, so. for sure. And this is one. Wait, of wait, the wait! Don't say that... yeah. That's a, it's exactly the opposite that what you just described. So no, when you it's, say it's not. Okay, because what you're but, describing okay. is how we get to an oligarchy. No, but again, once we're at the oligarchy, you don't just have either exclusive control of the private sector, or it's it's not an or condition, or uh, uh, political control. You have both of them. Okay, do you think that we live in a worldwide... Why, why aren't there a whole bunch of people competing with, like, Intel and AMD for manufacturing chips? It doesn't have to apply to every private sector. What? Okay, which private... How do you determine which ones it applies to? Well, to be honest, I've 
you know, I, I've, I'm not like an economist and I haven't followed the news specifically, but this is something for people to discern on their own. I'm just here to present you with the fact that this exists in America and there are private sectors that have this. Uh, I didn't, like, I had to prep before this while also going to work quickly to check on something so I didn't have the most time to get everything together but there are clear examples and I feel like I've already provided a couple through you like haven't given me a how, single how one we... no no I'll let that be what I had okay. said uh, I'll just say follow Erudite I'll shout her out in the chat she's great oh my goodness hello hello okay I wanted to go over a couple quick things uh, most of these are selfish some of these are general guiding things okay because I'm okay I'm listening now from the outside in the rain, okay, as you motherfuckers all talk about me, okay? Is that weird? Like, what's that? Well, it's a little- Not to distract, I don't wanna, I don't wanna Oh no, you're good, yeah. Normally, it was fun because I can jump onto panels and people are saying dumb shit, but now I'm an outcast. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've picked up on this, but when people call me a good debater, you understand that that's a huge insult, right? So, I, I know that they intend it as an insult. I guess it just feels cringe to me. It's almost like somebody being like, oh, what? So you're just like a really good student? And it's like... Kind of. So the, the way that people frame this is that I am a magician that can defend any position. And all of my arguments are bad. All of my positions are bad. And I'm evil. But I'm just a really good debater. So I make it sound right. good. That's like so the, you're kind of like a lawyer. Like I can argue anything yeah. even if I'm wrong. Which yeah. means that they're morons. That's their problem. If they suck at being able to defend any position. And usually it's because okay. my positions are right. Okay. Position, so position. fuck these losers. Okay. So that's yeah. number one. Okay. When people call me a good debater. They're just trying to take shots at my positions, but they're too stupid to do so. Okay. So with the way to counteract that be like, hold on, like clarify what you mean by that. And then... Well, I don't want to give you tips on, like, how to simp for me on panels, because it feels weird. <laughs> but, like... Well, I, I mean, it's vernacular. Like, I'm I'm kind of a normie coming in. So, like, mm-hmm. these kind of... Like, I've picked up that good debater is meant as an insult, but I'm normie enough that I'm kind of, like, yeah. I don't get it yet. You know, When people I'm say like, shit like well, this... is this an insult? <laughs> yeah, when people say shit like this, you should be like, oh, like, what's an example of a position that he debates well that he's actually wrong about? I would be curious to hear what these fucking morons... And usually they'll just say, I don't have any examples. That's what they all always say yeah um number one um I, there, fuck i just wrote in a lot of really dumb things that she said um this scarlet person is one of the dumbest people in the world so she said other people can handle hate um or that like other people are capable of dealing with hate. nobody online in these communities is capable of dealing with even the slightest of pushback everything is evil transphobic brigading hate speech whatever nobody can deal with any amount of adversity they immediately break down and start crying so mm-hmm. there's very little resiliency in any of these communities. Um, what is this? Oh, God. All of these were so specific to her. She said, I do no preparation. She came on to argue with me once about... Oh, I about, was so mad. Yeah, oh, she I came on so to argue with me about that. whether or not America was oligarchical like Russia was, which is clearly ridiculous. <laughs> and when she came on to argue about it, she didn't know what a super PAC was or what dark money was or what the difference was between a PAC or a super PAC or what citizens... She didn't know anything about any of these topics. I don't know why I people just, accuse me of not preparing for that. You do yeah. research on stream. Yeah, like, I know. I was just like, what do you mean? What yeah. do you mean? Like... It's just so fr- like I feel like everyone's being like, oh, she's just like a hard simp, and I'm like, look, there are critiques you can make of Destiny. It's just not these fucking ones. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, close. <laughs> Mind blowing to me. There aren't any critiques you can make of me, but um, otherwise I agree ah, with you. Of course. Okay, I see. Yeah. Um, Other than your Jordan Peterson <clears throat> takes. Wait, what do you think you disagree? Just, Hold on, what do you think you disagree with me about I'm that? I'm literally just memeing. Yeah, you. that's right, because all of my Jordan Peterson takes are 100% dead on, okay? Nice try, okay? Um, yeah. Uh, what, what else was I saying? Um, oh, there are, there will, okay, hold on, real quickly. Brigading, okay? What brigading Fuck, yes. is, is brigading is when you direct a community to go and harass somebody, okay? Brigading is not when you talk about a creator and then some of their fans happen to come and either shit on you or engage you in conversation over it. That's not brigading, right? Do you understand that? No, that's just, that's, yeah. yeah. So this is where I was getting stuck with. Again, these are like the, the normie person just trying to mm-hmm. get ingratiated. Cause like, I've really only been in this scene for literally, cause I wasn't even a big like watcher of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, 
like at all. Like I really only heard about you like a month before I even talked to you. Mm -hmm. And so it's like this idea of like, I have this long standing parasocial relationship is actually not really borne out. Like I, I have more parasocial relationships with researchers that I've listened to, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I I went into this specifically with them. I like tried to outline because my understanding is exactly what you said. The brigading is like a very intentional uh -huh. action um, that the actual content creator is doing. Like, hey guys, here's this person I hate. Let's mm -hmm. get in there. Or it could even be directed shit. by the community. Someone in chat is like, guys, let's all go over there and fuck her up and blah 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 blah. Like that could be brigading too. None of this. Yeah. Not only does it not happen in my community. It doesn't, it, it never happens in my community. And if it was, I would obviously be super banning for it. But also, if it was, like, if we wanted to brigade, it would be hundreds of comments, not fucking four or five people in chat. Give me some credit, okay? If I wanted to bully somebody off the internet, all right, they're gonna be getting emails, tweets, Instagram DMs, their shit is getting doxxed, they're gonna be nonstop chat rooms. I literally have a fucking VPN sponsor, so my motherfuckers would be on 10 accounts, okay, bullying these people into suicidality. The idea that there is like some huge quote unquote brigade and they could show you a log of like five banned people, that's a fucking joke, okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, so that, 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 that everything, yeah, I, I would always just say if anybody makes these comments, I just ask for proof because there's none. And I think even that happened on that panel. I think you asked a couple times like, oh, is there any proof? And, but what happens is, is, um, <laughs> have you heard of simulacra? No. Okay, never mind. There, there's like this thing that happens <laughs> where something is said and then it's repeated and it becomes so strange that like something is basically, truth materializes when enough people verbalize it. And you, when you try to go back to the original claim, it's not actually there. It's just, you don't even know what's happened anymore. And a, a couple times that Scarlet person even said as much, she was like, well, everybody says it's happened. How are you gonna deny all these people experiences? They've all said it's happened. Well, the only reason they're all saying it's happening is because everybody's saying it's happening. And the only reason people are saying it's happening is because it hurt someone else's happened. but it's not actually happened. It's never happened. What the fuck? There's not like a, li yeah. like if I was doing this, there'd be so much evidence, right? This is happening in chat rooms on the internet. Everything is fucking logged. Every tweet, every chat, I've got logs in my whole fucking chat on websites. If you ever see people like post logs people's chats on overall logs that came from my community so like yeah it's uh, it's very 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 irritating that people just massively say that and then also and then now the new meme i guess driven by the scarlet person and a couple others is this idea that i'm like this fucking rapist or sexual assaulter behind the scenes i have yeah. had sexual relationships with people that fucking hate me now and none of these people have ever come out and accused me of anything so like if there was like a secret rape that i did other summer i think it would have gotten out by now but th it's always this like weird like oh there's a bunch of people that want to say something but they don't want to speak up or they can't or they're scared it's the biggest cop-out bullshit in the fucking world like well, there's so much incentivization <laughs> To speak up now like yeah of course you get could... platforms and book mm -hmm. deals from speaking up about this shit right and so you... the idea that like there wouldn't be motivation to fucking topple like a 13 year streamer mm -hmm. with like serious especially if you like add evidence of like actual claims about this stuff like mm -hmm. it's just wild yeah wild to me um i remember so my uh, husband went into a chat with one of the people in the um panel yesterday afterwards and was Which just being person? like hey like X1, and it was just like, okay. why do you believe that Destiny's a bad person? Like, what evidence, like, why? And they were basically just like, well, I've heard it from other people on the left. Yeah. And he was like, so wait, you haven't actually like watched Destiny? And he's like, no, I'm not really interested in that kind of shit. And it was just like, then why, the, what, why are you here? Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. It's just mind blowing. It's just, I, I yeah. yeah, mind it's, blowing. It's, now I understand why you call it high school. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's really, 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 really annoying, yeah. But, um, uh, oh yeah, and then also I noticed you struggling with this. Um, when people say on the left today online, that basically exclusively means communists and socialists. Um, that yeah, that espe especially in Twitch where the communities are so far left leaning. Um, liberals in the American sense like Democrats are not considered on the left. They're considered either centrist or just center right. I, I, I agree that that's what they view it as, it's mm -hmm. just delusional <laughs> it, it, yeah i mean obviously it is but yeah but what anytime you hear somebody say something like destiny isn't on the left what they're saying is that like he's not a socialist or if you get accused of being not on the left it's because you're not a socialist yeah yeah it's just wild just wild to me <clears throat> yeah um okay well i think that's all i wanted to scream about that i can think of okay um yeah i feel like I got sent a clip of you screeching every time I muted. And oh yeah, why do you was, do that? 
I was so mad. Okay, it was just a big miscommunication. I had multiple people expressly telling me to mute. And um, then somebody who like actually like helped me manage this misunderstood what those people were communicating. And they're like, they're like, just listen. Uh -huh. So I was like, fine, fuck it. I'm pretty sure they're wrong, but sure. I'll fucking mute next time when I'm like talking to people and stuff. And then everyone was like, stop muting. And I was like, motherfucker, I know it. I was so mad. Nice. So yeah. Way to go. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well. What? What? Yeah. Um, okay. I have so many questions. Okay. We were talking a bit about why people seem to consistently stab you in the back. Um, cause there's, there is this kind of <laughs> common sentiment that like you're mean, um, that you like really go after people and stuff like that. And like I said, I've not been on this space for as long. Um, I've been like catching up on the lore and stuff, obviously, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I'm just curious on like why you think that that's happening specifically. Oh, well, you're asking me why it happens? Yeah. I mean, um, it happens to you. <sighs> why, um, hmm. That, I, I, it's, that's kind of hard. <laughs> um, the answer that I think I can give, I, I've actually, I've thought a lot about this, and it's really, really, really hard for me to understand. Um, I think that it's just, uh, my, so I think this comes down fundamentally to like our, our models of how people work. Um, and it, it, so this is all going to stem from that model. So if, if you like disagree with this fundamentally, this is going to sound kind of crazy. But I personally think that the vast majority of people are very, very, very selfish, like very selfishly driven. Um, I think that exceptionally you'll find people that are more considerate of others. But I think most people just kind of like maximize for the things that make them feel the best and, and do what they do. Um, so when it comes to associating with me, I think that there is a great deal of utility that I can provide most people for a variety of reasons, whether it's websites or consultation or platforming or whatever. Um, but I tend to exist outside of a lot of social circles. Like I'm a very not clicky person. I will do, you know, I'll talk to anybody, do anything. Um, and most people tend to exist in pretty clicky circles. A lot of people like the comfort that they get in groups and stuff. So if I exist outside of those circles, and if you're not actively associating with me, and if it becomes trendy or popular to hate on me, I think that most people will just opt for that because there's gonna be a lot of friction in defending me to your group of friends, but there's a lot of validation and acceptance in attacking me along with that group of friends. So that's typically what happens. And I think I see this expressed the best in people like Merrick, so this is another person that I have, I used to be pretty close friends with, had had a sexual relationship with, um, her, me, and Melina, like everything was chill. And she wavers back and forth between like, oh, Destiny, like we talk, you're cool, I understand you. And then also whenever she's in her groups on Twitter, or whatever, is relentlessly shitting on me, liking tweets that attack me and like looking for that sort of validation of saying that I'm an evil person. So like th that seems to be the case that depending on the social group you're in, the more likely you are to be shitting on me because there's so much easy, I don't want to say clout, uh, like social credit or validation from attacking me in those circles. That's, that would be my guess. That's a really long way to answer, but. Okay. So, clicks. Uh, okay, that's, I, I would agree that basically I would agree most people are fundamentally selfish. I think when you find people are like deeply unselfish, it's definitely a rarity. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's, I could be wrong because I see kind of this pattern of like, I would say um, it seems to be when I've talked to people that you're one of the more, um, I don't want to say, I think generous is probably the right word. Like you actively Absolutely. go out of your way Not to help. Not even close to any of the other fucking creators. losers here. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the politics scene. Right. And uh -huh. so you, you let people have spaces, you promote them. Right. I mean, I've already said like, I for sure wouldn't have a, a career without you in, in this sphere at all. And uh -huh. it seemed like at least on the panel I was on, on fanatics, that was the case for a lot of people. Um, so it's I like, there was something I saw a lot in like the addiction field that was like really hard to not get burnt out on people, which is that like, Anytime I would extend like an extra amount of generosity or like grace or kindness to a client, would... it would somehow get like turned and like kind of thrown in my face. Um, Wait, what do you mean by thrown in your face? Like you'd get fucked over because they would abuse it or? Yeah, yes. you, basically. Okay. Yeah, this you'd is get unfortunately over abuse it. super common with people that are dealing with cycles of addiction, right? They get accepted yeah. back into their family, they come back, they end up stealing money again or something bad happens and it's like, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. And, and the, the, is, the issue is it actually burns you out. Like uh-huh. you don't want to be as compassionate to people in the future because you're like, fuck these people. And so I'm wondering, like, do you think that, like, why haven't, why haven't you burnt out then in this case where you like, you've been consistently generous and then you've had like multiple, like pretty large time streamers now that have like kind of like backstabbed you to some large extent. I don't know to what extent you feel about like Vosh and Asana backstabbing you. Um, um, or uh, Josie, even like uh-huh. kind of going on this brigade against you when you actively like tried to help her um, politics career and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Um, so do you think, it, so you're extra generous, but then why do you not stop being generous? Because part of what I'm looking at other content creators, I'm like, maybe they st- started trying to be generous and then they just experienced the traditional burnout of like things getting thrown back at you. So they're like, you know what, fine, fuck it. I'm not gonna be nice then. Um, that, that that's, a, that's a hard one to answer. I think it's just like personality traits and then maybe like where I came from. Like I enjoy helping people. There's, because of like the position I'm in in life compared to where I used to be, I can give a lot of help to somebody with incredibly minimal effort on my part, right? Like having a couple conversations with somebody or doing a couple easy things that are nice for somebody can make a huge change in their life while like taking very minimal effort on my part. Um, and I don't know, for whatever reason, I, that makes me feel good. I like, I tend to like doing that. And then mostly when I'm engaging with those people, it's usually like a fun experience while I'm doing it. Like, um, I, I, there are very few like charity projects that I do, right? Like I don't have you on because like, I want to help boost you up as a streamer. Cause I'm looking to like, you know, help you as a charity project. It's cause you're fun to talk to. Um, and then that is the case with most people as well. Um, I would say that I've probably felt it a little bit more recently where it's like, I don't I don't know if I want to help anybody with anything. Um, But I mean, like at the end of the day, I'm probably still going to run into people that I'll probably enjoy talking to them. And then if there's some amount of help I can like give somebody like, I don't know, it makes me feel good to do it, I guess. Yeah. Do you think that like your like barometer, because like I'm just trying to figure out, like it seems like you are particularly the case where like you're particularly generous and also particularly stabbed in the back. Like it's a very unique collection of both like trait and experience um, that I haven't <clears throat> run into a ton, yeah. but I also like don't typically work with like, I like think all there's... my clients in the past are mm-hmm. major time streamers, obviously. So that might just be the difference. I'm just trying to understand this. Difference. Yeah, I understand. I think something else that I noticed too, especially in my relationship with Melina, is that um, I, like, I have a model of how I view people. Um, I have very, very, very low expectations of people. And mm-hmm. when people act in predictable ways or like comport with the model that I have or my understanding of people, um, I, like it's very easy for me to cut people out of my life. Um, yeah. There have been like I've ran into a lot of situations where things were cool and they weren't cool. And it's like okay, well, I just cut this person out because this is like for whatever reason it's toxic, not working, or whatever. Uh, and I can do that with like very, very little emotional impact. I think for a lot of people, I think there is a great deal of emotional impact there. So that would probably make that burnout real. Like if I felt like every time I got backstabbed, I was losing like a really close friend and I had like a huge emotional cycle over it. Um, like I would probably start to feel that burnout and I would be like, okay, I can't do this anymore. I need to protect myself, you know. Um, but I generally just like it's pretty easy for me to just connect people are pretty predictable like it's not really surprising to me when it happens because it's like you know i understand like you have all these things that you can gain from acting in this way and yeah it is what it is okay and do you think that this kind of line that you're explaining is precise precisely why people would say like you're cold or like emotionally blunted and stuff like that um i it probably goes along with it yeah okay okay interesting do you think that you have a bad read of people by any chance, like the people that at least previously you would maybe bring more into your inner circle um, because your barometer of who you talk to is like fun that you might overlook. I'm just trying to understand. I like guess just it's just a very unique. I just haven't seen this pattern. Mm-hmm. As- um, I think I, I think I generally have a pretty good read of people. Um, I think that a lot of people think I have a really bad read of people because uh, because I'm in so many crazy situations. But the reality is, is that like I the entertainment and the interest is like a lot of fun for me. Um, I understand there's a lot of people that I talk to. Even currently, there are some people that are kind of like people that I'm actively talking to that <laughs> have like a high potentiality to be insane. Um, but I mean, like I said, there's not there's really not a big cost for me. You know, if they end up being an insane person, it's who cares? You know, it's just I have to cut them out. But it is what it is. Um, I think that my the most realistic thing I'll say is that like, I think it's hard to truly know if I can trust somebody or to truly see like um, how much I could trust somebody until we've been in a situation where they could have fucked me over but didn't. That's usually like my big like, okay, now you're somebody that I super duper duper trust. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just like, there's a lot of unique factors. There's also the fact that it's really hard to, well, unless you can get me banned from something, it's really hard to hurt me because I'm super open with everything. It's not like I'm a man with a lot of secrets or something and I, right. I trust you and I let you in and now all of a sudden like you can do a lot of damage to me. Like very, very, very few, pe maybe three people in existence have any kind of actual leverage over me, like the ability to do some emotional harm to me. So it's, it's not like there's a big risk I'm running ever, you know? Yeah, when you say you build trust, when somebody fucks you over, do you mean specifically like, you know, that maybe you have like a DM or something, or just like in the case of like, when there's um, clout to be gained by like shitting on you, if they choose not to, like when you're saying fuck over, like, what does that actually mean? As in, yeah, when you have the ability to build a big reputation or to get a lot of clout by shitting on me. Okay. Um, so there, yeah, there are some people that I can see like how they're kind of functioning or flowing and moving through events. Um, I hate to use this person as an example because it's an example of me becoming an autistic, but like Lauren Southern, I think is a decent example of that. Um, she's got like a, an audience that's like primed to hate me. Um, obviously there's a lot to be gained by shitting on me publicly and she's in a pretty good position to do it, but like she doesn't. And like she like deleted her Twitch channel out of solidarity or got a banned or whatever, which I, I didn't ask her to do. I thought it was kind of funny, but I'm um, like that. That's like an example of like, oh, like this is a person that could have like pretty easily, you know, like been crazy publicly, but wasn't like, that's cool. And I appreciate that. Um, but when I, yeah, when I see somebody has the opportunity to gain a lot by attacking me or shitting on me and they choose not to, that I, that's usually something I consider pretty heavily in terms of how much I can trust a person. Okay. Um, how are, man, it must be so weird for you to like watch people on Twitch, like screeching about you over and over on panels. How long do you think it'll take for this to like fade and people will just stop caring? Uh, probably, I always say two weeks at the most, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, do you think there is, like, even if, say, something happened and Twitch wanted to bring you back in, do you think you'd ever go back to Twitch? Um, it depends on what that go back means. I don't know. Um, I mean, I think I can do pretty well on, um, I think I can do pretty well on YouTube streaming. I mean, I have, but I know I can. I've been dual streaming. And there are other platforms that theoretically have opened up for me now, too. Um, I don't know. I don't, I just... The thing that bothers me the most about Twitch is just really, it's really just the story is what bothers me. It's not the money or what's happening. It's just like the idea that there's a lot of people that think that like Hassan made politics on Twitch and that I was just like this guy that eventually became this far right lunatic or whatever. Like all of that, that it's like all of it is just so not true and it kind of bothers me. And then I guess it kind of bothers me like the legacy that I leave behind in terms of like that politics scene is just like infested with so many far left absolute fucking lunatics that I don't know, just it's kind of irritating, I guess. Like it feels sad to me that when I look at the grand um, landscape of YouTube politics. It seems like there's so much more representation of different beliefs here. Although maybe it's because there's bigger viewer bases, so there could be more communities. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Do you think you'd ever get unbanned, or do you think it's truly like permanent? I, I mean, I, I, right now I'm thinking that there's probably a decent chance that I would get unbanned from like six to twelve months from now. That would be like my guess, but I can't, I can't truly know. It might literally be like a forever. Who knows? Yeah. As stupid How as it is, is, sometimes these things come down to like one or two people on trust and safety that really fucking hate you. So I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. How much do you actually know about like the Twitch moderation board, like inner workings? Because that's something that like I just, I think most people actually on the sphere mm -hmm. have know nothing about. I mean, the fact that like even on the panel when people are being like talking about like size and stuff, and I'm like, let's just be real. Like politics is less than 12% of the revenue of Twitch. Like Less than Twitch what? Politics, it's less than 12% of the Twitch revenue comes from the politics streaming purely. Oh, where, where did you get that number from? Uh, at least it came from Devin Nash. Um, oh, God. Or shit. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I love Devin. He's cool. My, if I had to <laughs> guess, I would say that, that the true answer is like less than 1%. Like, really? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, you think 12% is generous? Okay, 12 I totally is, misread that's your like response there. at least one or two orders of magnitude high. It might be 0.1%. Um, oh, damn. Yeah, well, because you have to figure, right? Like, unle unless. The only way you can get by with approaching 12%, which still wouldn't get you there, is if you included the totality. Uh, oh, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, I was about to say this, yeah. If you include all of the just chatting section, which I think people in chat are saying that's what Devin was talking about, all of just chatting, that could be 12%. Yeah. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. you know what? I bet you I'd have to look back at the video in the specific graph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So 12% yeah. so all of just chatting like... makes sense. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Is Ms. Kiff included in part of like the just chatting yes. usually? Yes, all of the okay. LSF okay. gets yeah. out, yeah. Okay, so politics alone is probably even smaller Less than, than 1%, yeah. Okay, Easy. how much does the moderation team have to do with the actual like revenue though? Because Devin Nash's video made it seem like they're decently separate. I just don't actually... 
Um, I think they're all pretty separate. It's a pretty bureaucratic now, and they all kind of like are in their own little departments. So yeah, yeah I doubt. I don't think that you're going to get like a trust and safety guy that's making bans based on like the revenue that Twitch is making. That's just not in the purview of what they're considering or what they're doing. With the the only way that an exception could be made there in a roundabout way would be that yeah. like if you're a major partner, you're probably going to be talking to the partnership's team before big bands go through. So you could interpret that potentially as like, oh, well, look, now they care about revenue, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I suppose. But you could also interpret that as like once you're partner, they give you like extra privileges. Yeah, which they do. Like your contract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I had a question and I just forgot. Um do you think you did too good of a job paving the way for the left on Twitch? Um, I think that the big issue that I have to be mindful of is, um, it, it, like, I think that curating a healthy political audience is a little bit like mowing the yard. And if you only mow one section, and that's the only thing you pay attention to, you can't expect the other section to magically stay in line. It's going to overgrow. And I think that for a long time, I've done this on both sides, where I spent a lot of my content exclu exclusively shitting on conservatives and attacking conservatives. And I didn't truly think that I had like communists and socialists in my, like, in, in my circle, in my fan, but I didn't think that happened because that, that's so cringe to me. I would never expect that, but it did. And I just, mm -hmm. I totally missed it. Um, so I think that if I made any mistakes, it was just not, I didn't really do a good job ever at combating radicalism. People like people always say like, oh, Destiny de-radicalized people. I don't really think I did a good job at doing that. I think I just re-radicalized a lot of people to the left. Um, mm. And then I think as of recently, I've done a lot better job at that de-radicalization thing. But I think when people are radicalized, they want radical shit. So, you know, if you know, yeah. if you were a person that really liked to hear about like the Jews controlling the world and shit, well, now you really want to hear about like fucking billionaires controlling the world and shit. Um, and those types of like hyper like partisan, super like one size fits all narratives are just really attempting or I'm sorry, really attractive to a lot of people. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really interesting. I've I've at least personally seen many people who went from like true full blown Nazis mm -hmm. to then like full-blown communists yeah. within like a year yep. and it's like it feels like it's such a large movement but you when you look at the actual like beliefs that they have you're like oh it's it's, it's kind of the, the same, same shoe yeah. it's just a different color mm -hmm. yeah you there's like one group of people basically that are controlling the system and are destroying everything um and you know for people on the right it was jews for people on the left it's billionaires um you know you have no true representation of the system the system is broken it doesn't matter like left and right people very far left very far right will both believe this like both of them will tell you that they have like their one pet problem that explains like all the trouble in society if people would just listen to their one solution it would fix everything like yeah it's, it's pretty like standard for people okay and so do you think because like essentially saying like you didn't mow both sides of the lawn that um it's why people are like acting so like kind of deranged when you criticize the left because it's just like they're not used to hearing you criticizing the left so they're like oh well if he's criticizing the left and he must just be a right winger now i mean initially um, yeah i think that's where a lot of the criticism came from i think right now you can argue that like because of how much time i've spent attacking left-leaning people i'm kind of like letting conservatives slide by so maybe i'm fostering more of a conservative audience as a result of that i mean there's like things to say there although it's harder when conservatives have been banned from every fucking platform so there's none to talk to yeah. anymore um and like 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 yeah. people don't seem to, people will never recognize this. Like for women, minorities, whatever. Like the left won the culture war, right? Like it's over. <laughs> like mm -hmm. the left absolutely won. But they'll never admit that. They'll, they like they still act like every day you're on Twitter. Oh, like we got a good acceptance for fucking gay people. Like they're like screaming at us, bro. Like you, we got it. We won. Okay, that shit is over. Yeah. Um, now like the important it's battles in are. It's, it's in public yeah. education. That's now like, the important the battles way. are legislative battles, right? Now you need to go to Congress yeah. and do these fights, right? The culture war is fucking way the fuck over. Um, and I think even conservatives have recognized a lot of this um yeah but so yeah i mean like i i probably it would be nice to this is why like again talking to people like lawrence southern and nick fuentes is being able to argue against conservatives feels good again so i can talk about those points also sometimes those arguments are a bit more grounded in reality um i'd rather have yeah. an argument over like ukraine and russia and the future of the united states versus like you know are non-binary trans femme lesbian men real or not like I, this is just like jesus fucking christ it's like these niche 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 hyper niche social issues that i don't think anybody even cares about even the people that talk about them so yeah what um i'm curious 
uh, you don't have to share, but do you know the average age of your community or like the, the very It's older than age? everybody that makes fun of the age of my community. <laughs> I know that. Um, I could probably <laughs> look it up on YouTube, but like long form political content is pretty boring. Um, yeah. Somebody actually, wait, somebody in chat should be able to tell me, right? Don't, we've done like polls on this in my subreddit. Um, um, chat's always, how, how delayed 21 to 25, 23, those seem young. Hold on. 18 to 25, I'm sure that's Somebody, there's like, there there were polls in my um, subreddit. Somebody does like a big, God, this guy is so obnoxious. Does any, can somebody just link the subreddit post? <laughs> there's just numbers popping up in chat now. Okay, hold on, I'm just gonna check my YouTube. I don't know, these guys are okay. being fucking retards, hold on. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, it would be under analytics, audience. Uh, so on YouTube, 30% um, of my audience is 18 to 24, 50% is 25 to 34, and 13% is 35 to 44. So it seems like okay. the average age is maybe somewhere around like 28, 29. A okay. Bit, or maybe a little lower, maybe like 26, 27. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. I always notice at least like this is a trend I see a lot, at least in like, even like some, there's some empirical evidence behind it that like once people hit about like 18 to 21, they become really politically interested, but extremely politically unversed. Mm -hmm. um, so that they like have a lot of raging opinions, but they don't actually like spend a lot of time in content, like ingesting information yeah. and then they get like usually dumpstered in debates a couple of times and then they start trying to be like oh maybe i should like read um so i'm not surprised Wrong. by that like <laughs> nobody wants to that. read but yeah i mean read nowadays means listening to long-form political debates on youtube <laughs> at this oh, point okay. uh, i would i would suggest i would guess um okay so you're at, the average age is like 28 to 29. i'm really curious to see what happens to our culture as like the zoomers grow up and like begin to like move kind of into these age spaces to yeah. see kind of All bad what shit. culture. Yeah, well, the Zoomers are just weird, right? Like they're mostly really far left, but then they have like really weird, aggressively like right leaning stances on like very specific topics that you just don't expect. Maybe that's just Canadian youth. Um, like over what for a Canadian youth, I'm curious. Okay, so most of my Canadian youth that I've worked with, and in fairness, I have a unique population because I work with at risk. They're mm -hmm. really far left on LGBTQ stuff, trans stuff, and then staunchly staunchly opposed to abortion okay gotcha, gotcha. or they'll be aggressively for abortion and there's like no in-betweens mm -hmm. um which is just like very interesting um yeah just the collection of beliefs i've heard from my youths and stuff have been interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i think um so something that is a little bit worrisome to me i we just talked about this earlier on stream is that um i think that i think there's a lot of validation for young people today that's like very negative. Um, like I talk about like attention seeking behavior and everything so much on social media and everything. I think like to some degree of attention seeking behavior is probably developmentally normal, right? When you're in your like late teens, early twenties, you're trying to find out who you are, you're you know discovering your identity, you feel like you want validation, but like we all believe in saying do like cringy fucking things, right? Hopefully if you're like a well-adjusted 25, 30 year old, you look back when you were a teenager and you're like, oh my God, like I was so cringy. I was like a hardcore Ayn Rand libertarian or like a crazy ultra far left commie or whatever. Like we all go through these things. It's fine, it's normal. Like, I think it should happen. But right. I think it gets weirder today when a lot of this recently has been like wrapped up in gender identity. And then a lot of this has been like massively parroted on social media. And I think you're putting people in positions where like they can never walk back from any of these things because they have an unimaginable amount of validation. And um, and it's like very, very, very social. Uh, like, like you can get on media say like I can't imagine what I would be like as a human being if I could go onto a Twitter and get like 50,000 likes for something I believe when I'm 16 years old like I think that would have stunted the yeah. fuck out of my growth I would have just been done like <laughs> yeah and it's crazy because I'm, I'm actually going into specifically like adolescent focused developmental clinical psych in the fall like that's going to be my focus because like there's actually not a ton of research about it but like there's still a developing brain, but the like sections that are like, we know like under three, like emotional and attachment formation is like 
critical in that window, right? Uh And then we know from like three to like 10, it's about like language and like schematic development and like understanding concrete to abstract concepts in the world. Uh And then like once they're in adolescence, it's all about like, who am I? Where do I fit in? What's my role amongst my peers? And what's like my niche in this world? Like that's a huge part of of development. Uh And it's just like, it's, it's interesting to me. I was thinking about this today about like how we know social media, for example, increases eating disorders when we see more and more like skinny kind of Instagram models and and Uh whatnot, especially in teens. But then it's interesting talking with like trans advocates and being like, but of course, trans education has no No impact impact on 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 development. And I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, Uh of course it does. If we just, if we peddle anything to people of of this age about identity, it's of course going to impact them Uh because that's the like, that's the window that they're in for development. Like, why wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know. It just blows my mind. Yeah, it's really, yeah. I think um, something else that's happened, uh, I talk about this, I think we might have even talked about this. Something else that's happened is that like, as you found conservatives getting axed from more and more and more spaces, kind of like the the viewpoints just tend to go more and more left extremely because you don't really have any like counterpoint to anything that's being said. So like, why wouldn't things just get more and more, uh, you know, like branching off to the other extreme. And so now like the thing that's like the most embarrassing thing for me is like, I kind of like cut my teeth, like, um, you know, grinding through arguments with these like very, very, very right leaning anti social justice people who made all these insane predictions about what kids would be like, uh, you know, like five years from now. And I would constantly, you know, like most of my arguments are just like, this is like t- a two like tweet, like, why the fuck are you pretending like this is going to be the norm. And now it kind of is. <laughs> And it just feels like really strange that like, you know, cause like, I'm pretty sure you could even find like specific debates where, you know, people are literally saying like, people are going to identify as fucking deer in the future. I'm like, bro, nobody's talking about identifying as a fucking deer. And now people are talking about and identifying as deer. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. 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 Interesting. Do you think, because like, oh, there's, I remember I've only taken a couple of poli sci classes, but there was this uh, concept that was really popular that I'm sure you know about of like reactionary, right? Like if, if any society gets too far left, there's kind of this react right within the culture. Mm-hmm. Do you think... Do you think that that is likely in like a modern um, society? And yeah, I guess we'll start with that. Do you even think that that's likely? That, that oh, that there's gonna be like a pendulum swing back? Yeah, kind of that snap, in yeah. like poli said yeah. they would call it specifically the snap right. Yeah, I think it's I think it's gonna happen. I think we already saw some of this in the last election cycle. And I, I mean like the problem is that like far left voices are just completely unimpeded across all of our like cultural and social platforms. There's no pushback to anything. Like you could go online and say the wildest shit. And, and as far as it's like, you're telling the public line, like you're totally fine. I think Hassan is a good example of this, right? Like saying shit like we should murder cops, you know, let the streets run red with the blood of landlords. Like you could say insane shit like this and everybody's like clapping yeah. for you and they think you're like based. Or like that tweet that I criticized a few days ago where somebody was like, oh, like I'm a trans woman, I'm getting my first period, like this is awesome. And they've got like 100,000 likes and everybody's saying like, yeah, trans people get periods too or whatever. It's like, what the fuck? So I think that when you kind of lose like point, when you lose sight of the plot like that and there's no pushback or repercussion for it, I think eventually you're probably going to see it electorally. And then that's probably going to start to boil down to other things when it comes to policy. So that might mean things that are taught in school or might mean like the other viewpoints of people in society because they see shit like that and then they start to move in a direction. Um, But Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to see, like, I think politically we'll probably see that. I'm curious to see if the culture will also have a, like, a radical snap, right, as well. Um, Because that's not something I ever heard my poli-sci profs talk about. Um, But I think, like, culture is obviously somewhat entangled with politics. Um, And so if we expect our, our, if we expect politics to snap right, we would expect to some degree, probably not as aggressively, we would expect, though, some trickle of cultural shift right at least yeah i mean like there's like there's like an overton window of what is acceptable in society and politicians are constantly trying to find that so like i would say that a snap right politically is only going to happen after there's been a snap right culturally but you won't see the snap right culturally and, until it happens politically because it's hard to see nobody really yeah. knows who the overton window is right that politicians spend their lives trying to figure it out like that's like you know if you're smart you know you don't say something stupid like oh like trump made the country this particular way the reality is, is that the country was that particular way and that's why they were ready to accept trump like that's what you have to understand um, sometimes people have this foolish idea that one or two politicians can move the whole country in a particular direction uh, but like any shift they make is going to be really slight it's more just they probably discovered some section of society that already is how it is and they're able to tap into to that and then win votes you know yeah mm-hmm. but yeah 
Do you think that we'll see, so one piece is like the online social media, like this is where like it feels like the, I don't know what level of like theoretical landscaping we can actually generalize to social media. Like we have all these theories and whatnot about like politics and, and social psychosocial dynamics and all sorts of things. And then I'm like, does this actually translate and map well into like a social media landscape? And I would say like my, my knee jerk would be like, I'd hope some of it would generalize. That would seem like it's a human created system. So you'd hope that some human principles would apply. Um, but I, I just don't know, obviously based on like evidence. Do you think that like we'll see similar like psychosocial like systems that are tend to tend to be broadly true of like balancing each other out occur like is twitch ever going to like begin to like maybe normalize more like center or right-leaning positions well i mean I, I think we're i think we're in a really unique thing right now something that's really bad i think for our development is we're getting more um, there, there's it, there's an illusion that like more control is better, but to some extent we're able to self-select for our environment so much now. I think it's actually really harmful. Um, yeah. I talk about this in two two frames. Either one like when we talk about like Tinder, I think like through that sometimes I'll talk about how when you have the opportunity to swipe left or swipe right on somebody, like there are going to be a lot of people that you're swiping, uh, whichever the non accept direction is. Swipe left, I think, is not accept right. Uh, you're, I'm, you're asking the worst okay, person I for this. I think okay. left is no and right yeah. is... Like, there are going to be yes. people that you're swiping left on that if you actually met this person in real life, you'd probably get along with them quite well. But, like, you're just, like, hyper-selecting for, like, the traits they've listed in their fucking profile, and now you're, like, missing out on all these types of people. And yeah. I think that the internet has given us the ability to self-sort into community so much that we can avoid so many challenging experiences that it inhibits our ability to develop and be like a member that can engage with reality. Um, I think there's like a, um, <laughs> I think there's a 4chan meme that we've read recently and it's something like, uh, it's like it's like 1990, grow up, wanna fuck a toaster, don't fuck a toaster, live a normal life. And then it's like 2020, uh, you know, grow up, wanna fuck a toaster, go online, find a community of toaster fuckers, fuck my life up, fucking toasters. And that's like, it kind of seems like that is a problem maybe that's happened today to where like whatever belief you have, you can get it infinitely reinforced online. Um, yeah. And we live in a society now that values validation and affirmation more than challenging experiences. So yeah, it just all kind of comes together to make what I would consider to be like a really unique time in history. I don't think we've ever had the ability to self sort into environments like we do today with the internet. Yeah, and like kind of create these unique tribes that like usually like some level of like tribe and like in group out group was connected fundamentally by geography. Like that yeah. seemed to always be a foundation because of fucking technology limitations. Mm -hmm. And now you're selecting tribes and in group out groups where there's no geography that's like connecting you, which I think is like I haven't studied it enough, but I think like there is something that's like very interesting about like being connected in the actual like present world around you versus like online like what level of echo chamber is possible because it's like if you if you have all of the world as your option for forming an in-group out group you can probably find a couple of other like weird fucks to like also want to fuck toasters with yes but if you're just bound by your geography most people you maybe if you're lucky find mm -hmm. one other person but everyone else is gonna be like that's a bad idea and weird why are you fucking toasters you know yeah, and exactly. you'll get like kind of that social that social shaming and recourse mm -hmm. whereas we just don't have that now yeah it's kind of like how i point out that like you know there's a whole random group of people that you get thrown into school with but like generally most people are going to make a few friends make a few enemies like have positive experiences at school but like the idea of school once you're out of school is like sounds horrible like what is this like 20 to 30 people that you have no selection criteria for that are just the same age as you like these guys might be republicans or nazis or hateful or whatever like this is the worst thing ever you know it just yeah. sounds like a bad idea like post school but um yeah i don't know it's just a, it's fucked i think everything's kind of fucked yeah do you think then that like we're moving towards the age of like needing an internet bill of rights for example that like forces um algor like tech companies to make algorithms that produce like more balanced by like perspectives and stuff like i don't even know if that would be helpful because people might just if it's TikTok, sure they'll maybe get a balanced perspective on the right but they might just skip past it yeah, I mean, like, that could be the case, but we're talking way past the problem. And the first problem we have is even recognizing that it's a problem. Like, mo like very progressive communities are hyped the fuck up on that, like, have you ever heard of, like, uh, you can't tolerate the intolerant, like, that argument? 
Yes. Yeah, so when that's like the driving principle behind everything you do, which for a lot of super progressive people, it is, um, yeah. you, you've created a world where that what you're suggesting is actually evil or wrong. I don't want my children exposed to fucking far right beliefs or like, I shouldn't have to deal with this. Like, this is a threat to my existence. Um, so we, we can't even get people to recognize right now that it's a problem. Right? Like, look at how much pushback I get. One of the biggest criticisms of me is like, oh no, he platforms alt-writers. Uh, Destiny platforms yeah. these people. And, and Nazis like, like Lauren yeah. Southern. And yeah, I'm exactly. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, so it's like like these people, so we don't even, we're not even at the stage where people would say it's a problem. Um, well, other, it sounds yeah. religious. That's the crazy thing is like, I, I, like I'm, I don't know if you know this, but I grew up like a fundy Christian. So it's like all this, all this stuff I'm seeing on the left, I'm like, it makes me nervous because I'm like, I grew up in a world where it's like everyone was evil and kind of out to get you and like we can't tolerate the world perspectives and asking mm -hmm. questions is is not just bad it's immoral and you're like potentially evil and like maybe be even possessed by something evil it's just like so now that i'm like i've moved away from that obviously and now that i'm like seeing like semblances of it on the left it makes me really uncomfortable <laughs> yeah yeah, and then again, like things that I argued against like five years ago are slowly materializing. Like I, I feel like I've heard somebody like Ben Shapiro say something like progressive or wokeism is the new religion of the progressives or the left or whatever. And it's like, okay, this is really cringe. But I mean, yeah, you're getting into areas where like a lot of the tenets of some of the like most ultra woke shit is like, like, e like even, well, I'm not on Twitch. Like, so like, like the idea of like questioning somebody's gender identity, that's unquestionable. You can't even have a, even remotely begin to have a conversation there without immediately being webbed into like the worst, most evil type of person. Or like a lot of these conversations are just, yeah, they, ju they just become dogmatic very quickly. And it's just, it's very boring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm also curious about, because you've fought a lot more with socialism, you're probably just more ingratiated with it. I'm just trying to figure out my thoughts. I'm, I keep on, so you would think that people like Hassan and other like really big socialists would do something like creating like a co-op, um, which <laughs> no. feels like a big socialist idea. No. Um, I guess, why don't they? And then what are your thoughts on co-ops and stuff? I'm also in the middle of like, I'm not super interested in co-ops. I'm just exploring different business models because like uh -huh. I'm moving in the direction of probably also like turning certain portions of the streaming into like actual business. Uh -huh. um, I just think the, I just really like streamers who like use like their public presence to also to actually like, make do tech. fucking something yeah, yeah 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 thanks thanks for putting that simply <clears throat> most people don't give a fuck about anything they talk about that's like the first thing you have to realize is that like the the opportunity to do shit in this arena is just like it's all like social credit like people want the validation and then people make money doing it um the most obvious way is just look how people like run all their businesses like I, like if, if this sounds cringe but i challenge you to put up to any other person like i run my business stuff more like a socialist than every other socialist on the internet like i overpay everybody that I work with. I've never had like a like a thing where it's like Jesse didn't pay somebody. Um, generally, when you work with me on projects, I always cut you in on a percentage of the revenue. My YouTube editor is probably the most paid YouTube editor, like of like any fucking YouTube editor, um, because I think that giving people a percentage of the earnings like motivates them to work more, etc. Uh, no, nobody else that's like a socialist does this. Like they're constantly ripping people off, not doing shit. They've got drama. They don't understand what the fuck they're doing with any of their business shit. They don't actually. Yeah. The the most that they'll do are um, donation drives, which is really just. I think they're good. It's good to do a donation drive, but really all a donation drive is, is a way to put a dollar amount on how much clout you have, right? So I can say yeah. like, oh, you raised 200K, I raised 300K. Oh, you raised 300K? Because they're not like, they're not doing anything. It's just their normal stream, but they get to like have like a dollar amount for how much clout they're able to have for a given cause, you know? So yeah. yeah, I think that it's, and I hate that this is the case, but it feels a little bit different with some conservatives because it feels like, like when you look at Fuentes, for instance, he's built like an entire like political movement out of his, out of what he does. They have like conferences, they meet around places, they go and troll like political people in real life and shit. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I think a lot of the, the left-leaning stuff is just kind of like, it's the popular thing. Um, so a lot of people just do that because it's really popular and you get a lot of clout for it, but I don't think they have like a strong attachment to any of like what they actually talk about, right? I think a really good example of this was um, Hassan got in some drama before because he was he underpays the fuck out of everybody who works with him because mm -hmm. he's a greedy fucking capitalist. And um, <laughs> one of the things that he said when he got called out on this was, um, you guys are saying that, uh, you guys are trying to say that I'm not like doing this correctly, but like I literally bought this guy a computer to work for me. I gave him the means about of the his means of production. production. Right? Like, That's not the means of production, bro. <laughs> what the fuck are you even talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, somebody working for Assange should be able to buy probably like two or three or four computers, like a paycheck, <laughs> like to, if they're if they're working in a channel that size. But yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just it is what it is. What are you gonna do? What is your business model then? Like, do you think co-ops are a bad idea, like full stop, or do you think they just don't work? I think co-ops are a bad idea. I don't. Well, it depends on the business model. Um, it depends on the business model. It depends on your employees, and it depends on what you mean by a co-op because there's different structures for co-ops. But like. A co-op doesn't really work for my business model because I'm like, you know, like I'm, I'm destiny. That's who, that's, I am that person. Like, um, if I, if a co-op, like if the other workers in a co-op felt like they wanted to remove me, it doesn't really work past that point. Right. You can't like run my channel and everything, you know, without me. And also like my branding for my channel and all of that is kind of built personally around who I am. So the yeah. idea that I would like delegate those decisions to other workers that could overrule me, like, does not really make any sense? You know? Um, yeah. Yeah, I like doing rev splits because I want people to be incentivized in success. And if I have a lot of success, I want to share that with other people that are working for me that are like enabling it because I can't do it without them. So I usually work on rev split models um, or sometimes it'll be flat pay depending on if it's just like moderation or something. But yeah. OK, so would you say that in general, like capitalists are better than socialists when it comes to like business modeling and stuff like that? Like as far as like not just making money, but even like ethics. <laughs> I don't think I would ever generalize like that. I think that there are a lot of capitalists that are highly unethical in their practices. <laughs> um, yeah. And there are a lot of socialists that probably try to do their best as well. Like I know there are some people that run co-ops and shit um, that probably try to do their best. Yeah, I don't think I would ever, I, capitalism and socialism are just like modes of production to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, we're trying to figure it out. So my husband is building a fiz, fitness co-op with a partner, mm -hmm. kind of as like an experiment. And we're just trying to like, basically like test out how, well that's going to work and then based on that we're also being like okay how do we want to maybe convert it because i agree the big issue with a co-op when it comes to like something that's branded around a specific like individual uh -huh. is is the is the issues that you outlined but um yeah we're just kind of exploring kind of business what is he is he trying like to like open a gym uh yeah i believe they're trying to do a gym mm -hmm. um and and I don't know much more than that. I can maybe ask him if there's any more specifically mm -hmm. about it. I think with a gym, okay. I think that would work. Anytime you've got like physical property like that, I think it works really well, right? Because a co-op is going to have the percentage that people are buying in with can be go towards buying the actual gym. Um, the profits can be split between like the co-op owners, depending on how they're structured. Like, yeah, I think that works pretty well. Yeah. Um, speaking of fitness, I feel like you need some tips when I, I was listening to your talks about RDLs and stuff like that. <laughs> Careful, because if you say some retarded shit, I'm going to blow you the fuck up, okay? I'm not going to say anything, because I'm uh -huh. not the specialist. Okay. I'm just telling you, okay. genuinely, if you want some free advice, my husband is uh -huh. very good, and I was a little bit concerned about some of the things that you were hearing. And What? What were you concerned mind. about? Careful. Um, okay, let me think. Oh, I was only listening part of the time. Um, okay, RDLs, you were trying to figure out how to increase it, and you were talking about how you're getting all the way to the bottom. Wait, okay, um, hold on. So initially, a long time ago, okay, when I did deadlifts, I had a problem with um, my butt tucking a lot. And it took me a long time to figure out that the reason why was because if your hamstrings are inflexible, where they connect back in your hips can actually pull your butt down, even if it doesn't seem like it because of how far back the, the hamstrings connect. So one exercise yeah. that I started doing was Romanian deadlifts because on a Romanian deadlift, you can stretch the fuck out of your hamstrings while also doing like resistance training, which seems like a good kill two birds with one stone. Um, but I was just curious if your hamstrings are flexible enough where you can do an RDL and you can like hit the ground, even stiff legged, like, are you losing some of the benefit of that exercise? Is there another exercise that would be more advantageous to you? That was my question. Okay. That's right. I guess I had concerns about your lower back and all of that. My lower back is fine. It's strong. Okay. Why? <laughs> what about my lower back? What is your concern? Um, oh, do you want to, I, I feel like I should bring in the, the experts to talk about this more sure. than me. I, because all I know is I've got like mm -hmm. lots of fucking issues i do rdls like all the time uh -huh. and a big part for me of like managing my postures like i could get all the way to the bottom too pretty easily but a large part of that is because of like how flexible my lower back is um Oof, that doesn't whatnot. sound good but okay yeah it's really bad it's very not good for you so i was just when you're talking about getting all the way to the bottom i was like oh i hope his lower back is doing okay a lot of times like these like postural problems don't really like Sure. Emerge, if you're getting, I mean, if you're getting all the way you up for like two to three years. Yeah, yeah. If you're getting all the way down to the bottom of an RDL, it should be because you have a lot of, I think it's almost exclusively like hamstring flexibility. Your back, your lower back should be relatively straight or comp or neutral while you're doing any type of, any type of deadlift, right? Um, 
hold on. I'm just asking my husband if he has like specific thoughts since he's going to be the specialist on this. Sure thing. Like your remaining, your back, your lower back shouldn't be bending at all if you're doing an RDL. If it is bending at the bottom, that means that you're probably pulling the weight up. You're not activating the correct muscles. You're trying to like yank it up with your back instead of like squeezing your glutes to bring it up. I think. Yeah, I mean, I I think a large part is where you're going to be feeling the movement itself. Mm -hmm. um, I just got very nervous because I like really fucked up my back with RDLs doing them. Jesus. Because the issue is that like I, a lot of times your form looks correct. Like you said, like when your hamstrings are really tight and then they're, it's, it's not, it's actually like fucking up your posture, even though it looks correct. Um, the main thing is that you're like your back. Okay. He's saying the main thing is that your back should maintain the same arch and round. Uh -huh. um, if it's rounded, lift. that's fine. If it's arched, that's fine. It just needs to stay the same through the lift. Yeah. Cause if it's changing, then that means that the weight is like pulling you out of a protected position. Yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. That's fair. I'll okay. peddle you on, uh, on personal training tips later then. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Careful. Okay. <laughs> we take gym talk very seriously on this stream. Do okay? you? I got, yeah, yeah, I got flares and chat for it. Okay. Cause people say so much stupid fucking shit. So here's, there's so much bad information about training though. Like that's the issue. Is yeah. Like, no like, shit. There that's is. why I'm like reaching out to being like, Hey, it takes a lot, like finding good info on fitness because even like fitness research is like pretty, like some of it's pretty shit. Um, some of it's good, but a lot of it's shit. And we don't actually know, like everyone is like obsessed with like cardio for weight loss. And you're like, cardio mm -hmm. is not like your number one strategy for weight loss. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's just, yeah, there's a lot of, um, gym is kind of like, um, it's the same problem actually with psychology and philosophy, right? That you can, <laughs> anything that a layman can practice with no training, you know, they will. And then it all seems like it's hard to sort out the bullshit from the truth, right? Like the problem with philosophy is that everybody does philosophy and very few people have training in it. Um, and it's similar with psychology too. And it's similar with weightlifting stuff as well, right? Like everybody can do it and nobody technically needs a qualification to be a fucking trainer or whatever, so yeah. Yeah, it's like life coaches almost in psychology. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Lastly, I wanted to mention there was a guy on the panel with me named Professor Meat that I kept muting. And I am specifically bringing this up because I feel so bad for muting him because he was actually like saying some base takes on your, on, like in your defense as well. And I felt very bad listening back. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, I was just mortified by it. So I just want to like go out of my way to be like, his name is Professor Meat. And if you ever want to talk to him, I'm sure he would be super keen because I think he's got lots of questions for you. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um... Okay, I can't think of anything else. Is there anything else that um, you had thoughts on? No, not that I can think of right now. But if anything else comes up, feel free to let me know, okay? Okay, sounds good. I'm going to go work out and do RDLs properly now. <laughs> okay, that's good. Be careful. Don't hurt your lower back, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to overstretch. Okay, be careful, bud. Like someone. Okay, bye.